My name is Dr. Amir Raza. I'm a consultant gynecologist in London. My special area of interest is endometriosis and pelvic pain, and my expertise are in laparoscopic and keyhole surgery to treat endometriosis. Endometriosis is a common condition. It is present in one-fifth of the women. Most women will suffer with this problem from early 20s to mid 40s. There are many theories why endometriosis develops. One common way of explaining this is that our uterus or womb is made up of three layers. One is inside layer of endometrium, middle layer of smooth muscles called myometrium, and an outside layer which is a serosal layer. The inside lining of the womb called endometrium, the one which grows every month and comes out as a period. Some of this endometrium comes through the fallopian tube inside the abdominal cavity and make things like bowel, bladder and other structures around the uterus over this fallopian tube stick together. And this endometrium tissue which leaks out through the fallopian tube inside the abdomen make things stick together leading to adhesions, fibrosis causing pelvic pains and period pains. There are many other ways to explain it as well. There are immunological factors, there are inflammatory factors, there are genetic links, and that's the work which still goes on to understand the exact causes of endometriosis. The symptoms of endometriosis also depends where the endometriosis is. The classical symptom of endometriosis is period pains. The symptoms of pain will start before the period, will get worse during the period, and after the period, symptoms start to get better, or we can call cyclical pains. But as the fibrosis and adhesions grow more and more inside the abdominal cavity, this cyclical nature of endometriosis or pelvic pain starts to become acyclical, which means the pain continues throughout the month with obvious severity during the periods. This period pains can be mild, moderate are so severe in some cases that they won't be able to function normally. And as the endometriosis start to grow around the uterus involving other structures such as bowel, bladder, ovaries, then we may have some other symptoms as well. It's common to find women with pain while opening bowel in the period times or pain while passing urine. Endometriosis can also grow in the ovaries creating large cysts called as endometriomas and if endometriosis grows behind the uterus which is one of the most common places of endometriosis to grow it can involve rectum leading to deep endometriosis or rectovaginal endometriosis meaning endometriosis involving the vagina rectum back of the uterus if you have any of these symptoms then it's best to consult your doctors the doctors will carry out thorough assessment by your history and leading on to examination. Examination will be a speculum examination as sometimes in severe cases endometriosis can, see, can be seen. The first step is to carry out a thorough assessment. Assessment will include vaginal examination. As endometriosis grows inside the abdomen, it leads to nodules or small balls which can be palpable during examination. At times, endometriosis can grow through the vagina and can be visible on speculum examination. One of the most common tools we use in our clinics is pelvic transvaginal ultrasound scan. Ultrasound scan is a very good and sensitive tool. It can not only see endometriosis in the ovaries, which may lead to swelling of the ovaries, but also if endometriosis is crowned in the rectovaginal septum or behind the uterus. If endometriosis is of severe nature or involving the rectum, your doctor may ask you to arrange for a pelvic MRI scan. MRI scan is also a very sensitive tool to understand the extent and severity of endometriosis and involvement of other organs. In spite of all these tests, laparoscopy or a keyhole surgery still remains a fundamental tool to diagnose endometriosis. Endometriosis is visible inside the abdomen with brown black lesions, stickiness together or fibrosis. So a small camera tube is inserted through the belly button under general anesthesia and these endometriotic lesions can be seen inside. Usually we adopt see and treat policy which means we do a cap keyhole surgery to diagnose endometriosis and treat at the same time. Once the diagnostic workup is complete then there are a number of treatment options which can be considered. Treatment options will completely depend on your symptoms, involvement of other organs, the fertility questions 
and risks. And you need to have a thorough and detailed discussion about all these aspects while being cared. The more conventional way of putting these treatment options are conservative means do nothing, medical treatment to give you hormones, or a surgical treatment. There is no specific order for these things. At times, surgical approach will be better to start with and then to add hormonal suppression and vice versa. Endometriosis is an estrogen dependent disease. As the estrogen levels go up and they are high in the early ages, the endometriosis grows and causes more problems. So if we can suppress the estrogen by hormones such as combined oral contraceptive pills, progesterone hormones, GnRH analog injections, then all these kind of hormones will suppress the estrogen, making the endometriosis symptoms better. We do not have enough evidence to say that medical treatment will take away the endometriosis, but it definitely helps to relieve the symptoms significantly. There are a number of pain relief options as well, which range all the way from paracetamol, ibuprofen, stronger such as diclofenac, and moving on to more complex medical treatment, which I will discuss further under the heading of chronic pelvic pain. The surgical option means to carry out laparoscopy or a keyhole surgery, diagnose the endometriosis, and treat all the lesions. There's a discussion between should we ablate these lesions, which means burn these lesions, or excise these lesions to cut them out and take them away. The data is limited, but that limited data tells us that excisional techniques are far better and advantageous as compared to ablation. There's a better symptom relief as well as less recurrence of endometriosis. The management of endometriosis also depends on the extent and severity of endometriosis. British Society of Gynecological Endoscopy now has centers for management of this complex and difficult problem. As endometriosis can grow in various structures, it is important to carry out a multidisciplinary approach for the best benefit. The success of treatment will depend on the right treatment at the right time by the right team. A multidisciplinary team should have bowel specialists who are expert in treating rectovaginal endometriosis, a urology surgeon who deals with this condition as endometriosis grows around the ureters very commonly, a fertility specialist who can fine tune the management options in terms of fertility. As these treatments will never cure the endometriosis as such. In some cases, endometriosis will continue to give problem in spite of medical and surgical treatment, therefore help with a chronic pelvic pain team to help understand how to cope with the pain and how to treat it with treatment options such as amitriptyline, gabapentin, along with other desensitizing management options, physiotherapy, dietary options, psychotherapist. All these become part of a bigger team to manage endometriosis effectively. If you have more questions about endometriosis, feel free to drop a question and I'll try to answer them. Thank you.